Hi everybody, this is Katie. I want to welcome you to Chapter 2, which is How Computers Find Each Other on Networks. There's a lot of really good information in this chapter, things obviously that you'll need to know and really understand for the NetPlus certification. But I have the PowerPoint up. I'm not going to go through it because there's a lot of information in there. And I have gone through this chapter and have a good idea of what we're going to do in this video that will be a little bit more interactive for you to watch and do as we go through it. So here's the uh, presentation. Use this to help you read the chapter because there's still a lot of really, you still need to read the chapter and there's still a lot of uh, very good uh, things in here that will help you answer the quiz questions and so on. So go through that, but I'm going to close it for now because that's more fun. Uh, chapter 2 assignment up and then I have a plethora of different links that we're going to go to. So open up your book. I have my book open to page 49. I want to go through the beginning and stop at the important parts that we need to talk about. So, 51, uh, overview of addressing on networks. Uh, IANA, I-A-N-A, -A, that is the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, and they are the organization that dole out IP addresses, and manage DNS or top-level domains. So IANA and ICANN, I-C-A-N-N. -N. So read about that on 51. And the next few pages. Um, when we talk about IP addresses here on 52, we're going to talk about IP version 4 and IP version 6. We're going to just hit on them lightly today in this video, and then as we go on with IP, we'll look at more how you address them and uh, how you break them down as well. So that's just a little intro on that. Um, MAC addresses, those are the hard um, coded addresses that are on your network interface card. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now let's look at page 53. We're going to um, go through some of this together so that we have some something to uh, understand and look at. So if you're on a computer that is a Windows system, this book references Windows 8, but it doesn't matter which one you're, which version, they're pretty much all the same on how you access that. Oh no, this one refer references Windows 7. Um, you can pull up your networking um, information the same way that I'm going to show you, pretty, pretty similar. So do this if you can, so you can check out your data while I'm checking out mine. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you probably know better than I do on how to um, access your uh, protocol settings, so I'll let you do that however you do. But on page 53, applying concepts, these are things we need to learn how to, we need to know how to do for our assignment and then just uh, troubleshooting in general. Um, now, if you are sitting there on a mat going, how I can't do this assignment, then I, I think you should, um, I, I like, I like Macs, I think they're great, but you also need to know how to uh, troubleshoot Windows systems and understand where TCP IP settings are in there. So you might consider doing like a, a virtual system and throwing a Windows system on that. Uh, you're not going to get a help desk job ever or an IT job ever that just deals with Macs. Well, unless you work for Apple, but you'll have to understand Windows as well. So. Back to page 53, you can permanently assign a static IP address. So what is a static IP address? That's an IP address that never changes. Uh, you can assign that to a computer device, even like a router, and you can configure that, um, or you can configure that to receive a lease, and that's called a dynamic IP address, and that uses DHCP. So we'll hit on that later. So if we want to look at our TCP IP settings, we're going to go to the control panel. So I'm here on my computer. I have Windows 10, Windows 8 is similar, and Windows 7, you can just go to your control panel. But I'm going to just type control panel, 
because everything finds things for me. And I'm going to open up my network and sharing center. And uh, it may be listed as something a little bit different. So I'm going to go here first on mine. Again, just look around on your computer to see where it says network or sharing center or something like that. And then when I get in here, I can see my network and sharing center. So there was an additional step for me. So I'm going to go in there. And then I'm going to click Change Adapter Settings. So that would be over here. <clears throat> now when I go on here, this pulls up all of my network connections that I have on my computer. So I'm home on my laptop. If I were at work or on an Ethernet network, I would have a physical connection through um, an Ethernet adapter or port that you would see. But just some things to explain to you here. Um, I use Bluetooth to connect to certain devices. Right now I'm not, so I have a Bluetooth connectivity there. Those are things like uh, your Fitbit or your your map or location services that use Bluetooth technology. Uh, I run virtual systems on my computer so that I can install Windows Server and Linux operating systems and things like that. So those are what my virtual adapters are for VMware. And then my primary connection to the network in this case, the internet at my home, <clears throat> excuse me, at my house is my um, done through my Wi-Fi. So you probably have something a little similar. I'm sorry that I sound so nasally. I am actually homesick right now, and um, I feel motivated because I've spent a couple um, hours reading some of the new things in this book. Um, in this chapter specifically. So even though I'm not feeling the greatest, I would like to um, cover it now in case the cold medicine really hits in later and then I have no idea what I'm talking about. Might be an interesting listen, but anyway. Okay, so we're going to, to do, we changed the network adapters. I'm still on page 53. Um, oh, I'm going to look at my um, network connection, the one that you're currently connected to. Uh, you can probably view these, if you're on the school's computers, you can probably view these at school too. You can't change anything and, I, and at home I wouldn't recommend you change anything either unless you're really advanced in networking. But um, if you mess it up, don't hold me responsible. So don't change anything. We're just going to view these for now. So I'm my primary connection is here. Yours is probably a Wi-Fi if you're at home. Uh, if you're on your laptop at school or uh, at the library, it's probably Wi-Fi. And uh, if you're at the college, then it's probably an Ethernet connection, which is your, your primary. Um, and then I'm going to go down to Properties. And then here we have our different uh, services or connections, uh, services that this connection uses. And what we're going to look at, what we're looking at here, is exploring the addresses of, on our computer. So I'm going to look at my IP version 4 right here. I'm going to look at my IP addresses. Now, uh, we also use IP version 6 in most cases now, so you'll see that as well, but we'll, we'll go to that later. Um, this is how we can view the properties of IP version 4. So we're going to click on that and then click Properties. And then we have some configurations and settings that we can do here. Now, don't change anything. Don't do that. But um, what this is showing us is where you um, either set up dynamic IP allocation through DHCP, which is obtain an IP address automatically, um, or you set specific IP addresses, which is then done using um, or then done with static IP addresses. So you can choose whether you want dynamic or static out of here. Um, going over to uh, page 54, um, some of the things that are worth explaining because we're going to look at this in a another different window here in a second. Um, gateway or default gateway, subnet mask, and DNS server. So you'll see these terms here, uh, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS server. 
Um, the default gateway is the device that your computer goes to first. So, uh, right, if you were to, I, I, I want to draw something, but I'm really, really not a great artist. So, and I, let's see, well, how can I draw something on this computer? Okay, let's say that, um, I guess I can draw using, boom, 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 boom. I know, don't be yelling at me going, do this, click there, do that. Um, let me draw, well, I got a tablet, maybe I could, hold on, let me figure out how to draw something. You won't notice this pause, but I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, I found it. I knew I had this ability, this ability. Okay, so what was I talking about? I know I was talking about uh, looking at our properties here and what a default gateway was. Now, so let's say that you, that, that uh, here's our computer here. I'll do this fast because it'll be painful to draw, but the default gateway is the first device that our, our computer turns to for the net outside world. So if this is the, um, if this is the, let me just do a little bit bigger space. Where now, Lord, where did my ink features go? go to start inking. Okay, so this is my computer PC here. And I want to get out to the internet. That's a cloud. That's the internet. And um, there's a path between here to there. The first device, which is probably like a switch or a router, this is, since we don't know what it is, but it's the first physical or logical connection to my, my, um, from my computer to the outside world. So this is the gateway, the default gateway. <clears throat> and what you see or what you're configuring is the IP address of this machine. Um, the next thing that you'll see here, I guess before we go on to these things on page 54, um, to finish out my beautiful drawing, is that this would then connect to uh, maybe a, uh, another device that did network address translation, which we'll talk about in this chapter and actually do a NAT table, and then it connects to the outside world. So uh, there could be a whole bunch of computers that would connect to here. Ah, this is looking like a network, isn't it? Doing this with my mouse. So this is your, your subnets that connect to the default gateway, that connect to some sort of router that does network translation and firewall, um, and then it goes out to the, to the internet. Oh, Lord, that's a beautiful, beautiful drawing. Uh, one of the other addresses that you'll see here is a subnet mask, and um, this is used to, this subnet masks go along with IP addresses to identify which portion of the network they go to. So there's default subnet masks, and then there's when you want to subnet a subnet um, or break apart the networks that you have, you change your subnet mask. We'll get into these addresses quite extensively when um, we look at breaking down IP addresses in another um, video. So they're usually like like a subnet mask of a class C IP address is 255.255.255.0. So you've probably uh, heard of something like that said before. Um, DNS servers, these are the systems that are responsible for looking up um, DNS or translating um, domain names to IP addresses. And sometimes it's the same as our host name. I'm sorry, it's the same as our um, default gateway. So in this here, this, you know, could be a switch uh, or a router that 
was our default gateway, but also it could have DNS services installed. So this system here was the one that is the one that's responsible for saying, okay, you want to go to uh, katiebannermere.com, uh, and that IP address is actually 194. Dot blah 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 dot blah 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 dot blah, and then it would go out there and and get it and then return it back to here. But we'll talk about DNS today. Uh, in or in this video that you're watching now, today, tomorrow, somewhere in the fall or winter or whenever. But those have to be configured too when you set TCP IP. So I might need that. So I'm going to set that aside from now. for now. Whoa. Okay, so we're going to cancel out of here because our computers are set up to work. Uh, typically using a dynamic ad um, IP addresses, so we don't want to change it to a static IP. Um, so I'm going to cancel all of this. That's how you can find the IP settings um, for your computer that you're on. You can do that at the school um, or your, your computer at home you can look and change those IPs. Now what we're also going to do is on page 55 and 54 it starts talking about the command line interface and using commands like ipconfig, uh, we'll, we'll use netsh and uh, several other um, commands um, using command line. So you need to know how to access that. Now you can do that on um, you can do command line on Linux systems, obviously you can do it on Macs, but again you'll have to, to learn how to, um, well, c command line on Macs, they wouldn't be the same commands because these are Windows um, provided interface or command line interface, um, command prompt, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure on that with Macs, but I'm, you should be able to, well, yeah, it would just be command line, uh, like a terminal setting, uh, like you access with Linux, and then be able to run these commands. I don't know if they're exactly the same, but they should be something equivalent on other systems. But again, we're learning on Windows, and that's mostly uh, what our troubleshooting is about anyway. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, I hope you're still listening, though. Okay, so we're going to go to command line. So we're going to type CMD, uh, go to start, run, whatever um, you're doing, and then command prompt will come up. Now, if you right-click, you can run this as administrator. If you just double-click, it runs it as the user that, you are, that you're logged in as. And maybe you have administrative rights or not. If you're on the school computer, you probably can't run it as administrator, so just run it normally. If you're on your own, excuse me, if you're on your own, you'll want to run it as administrator. So, yes, I do. And then this window pops up. Now, I don't think, um, let me change my font a little bit bigger so you can see it. Oh, my gosh, I see a spider. There, that's really big. I'm going to multitask and kill the spider. Like spiders, it's fall time right around here. Okay, again, oh, where'd it go? Okay, we're on page 55 now, so that's what we just did. Ah! Dead. <sighs> Sorry, spider, you don't need to live, though. Okay, yucky. Page 55, it says uh, run an elevated command prompt. What this means is elevated, not like, well, it means run it as administrator. So run it as administrator, or you can just run it as a user, too. This, the commands that we'll use, for the most part, will still work until you s try to do um, some of the exercises later on. But um, they'll work for what our assignment is. Um, IP config, this is a command that um, tells us what our IP configurations are. So once you're here at your command prompt, you can do IP config and then a space slash forward slash all. And you want, you do this on your school computer, do this on your computer, do this with me right now because we have to do some of these things for our assignment. So I'm going to hit enter and whoa, that was a lot of stuff that came up. Yours probably is not as much or um, maybe it is. 
But let me just go through what I ran. So I ran IP config. I went all the way up to the top of my window. And again, I'm on my laptop. Um, the things I want, what I want to look for here is what my IP address is for my connection. So even on page 55, it shows a wireless LAN. It shows a um, Ethernet adapter, which would be when you're actually physically connected. And, and even in this image here on 55, she's disconnected. Um, she's using a virtual box, so that was her virtual machine. Any tunnel adapters for different protocols, like IP6 to 24. But uh, I'm on this computer called Katie Laptop. That's my, me, and I'm on that. And I'm going to go down. Uh, here's my wireless connection. There's my VM, uh, my VMware um, data. Now all this is protected, so I'm, it it doesn't uh, matter if you share this. I'm using dynamic allocation. I'm using dynamic um, IP allocation, so it changes all the time. Um, here's my Wi-Fi adapter, and that is what we're going to look at because I'm using Wi-Fi. There's my Bluetooth and my tunnel adapters. Now, if you notice. Some of these things, like um, if you notice, some of these things, like uh, VM network adapter uh, VM8 and VM1, when we went to our network connections and we looked at the little pretty icons, they were the same thing. So all we're looking at here is it through our terminal, our command line, and it gives us more clear data, I think. It's all right there. It's easy to view. Um, IP config is a command you'll have to use all the time. So, let me take a breather for a second. Um, continue reading through 56 where it shows you um, some of those things. So, like here on my um, wireless adapter when I'm looking at those settings, this here is my um, MAC address, where it says physical address. I'm trying to use my finger pointer. Do, 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 do. Um, physical address is your MAC address. So that, if you were to open your computer, pull out your NIC, if you could, that would be hard coded on the side of that. I'm using DHCP. That stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Um, IP version 6. That address is the link local IP6 address. And um, dynamic addresses are leased. So you'll see when it was obtained, when it was released, or when it, was, when it expires. Uh, we'll learn in this um, how to read IP version 6 addresses, why it says link local, um, here's my IP4 address, my subnet mask. We will learn all of that and how um, seeing, you know, like the lease is obtained. Well, if it expires tomorrow, well, actually it's the 16th. And if it expires um, three minutes ago, if you check my time, how am I still on um, my network. So we'll learn how it auto renews and things like that. So this is how you use um, the command line prompt. Uh, one thing real quick, I want to show you the assignment because in some of the questions you, you'll you have this assignment open um, or you'll get to it and we'll get to it at the end of this video as well. I'm just thinking, should I make um, multiple short videos, or are you still with me? Because I, you need to listen to this whole video because we're going to go through this assignment. But um, I guess I'll just keep going because you're still with me, right, people? Right? Okay. If you could see my face and you're not because one, it's in the middle of the night. Two, I'm sick. And three, it just I don't always like to do that. It's just kind of weird. Who wants to look at me? But anyway, I'm cheering for you. My arms are in the air. We're going through. Uh, whatever, Katie. What are you talking about? Okay. 
when you look at this project, some of the questions say this. Provide, provide, it, provide a screen capture of at least blah, 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 or provide a, a screenshot. <clears throat> when you're in um, the command line, to do that, you click this little icon here, go down to Edit, and do Mark. And then you can go, you can highlight whatever you want to copy. And then you can uh, go back up here and do edit and copy. Or you can just hit the enter. And then go over to where it says <clears throat> paste your or provide a screenshot and do a control V. And there is, uh, I'm going to undo that right now, but there is how you copy from here and paste into Word or somewhere else. So you do, uh, again, click here, edit, mark, highlight whatever you want, go to this button again, edit, copy, go over to where you want, and do a control V to paste. Works out perfectly. So 25 minutes later, we are three pages into this chapter. Speed it up, ma'am. Okay, uh, page 56, how host names and domain names work. Now, this is really kind of cool. Um, and anytime you want to take a break, you can, because you can just pause me. But uh, let's see, I got some cool sites I want to share with you. Um, see if I missed something yet. Do, 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 da, 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 da. Um, how host names and um, domain names work. Okay, so... Um, in DNS servers, uh, they keep a record of host name to IP addresses. It doesn't, so like if I go to katiebandermere.com or abcnews.com or uh, wherever you're going to, it doesn't um, have those words in the servers itself because computers read binary, they read numbers. So it is converted from DNS servers convert those host names to IP addresses and um, we have top level domains so you can go to iana.org um, these remember iana and i can i can distributes ips and iana maintains the top level domains those are tlds um, and you can see what the top level domains are um, Oh, those are port addresses. What the top level domains are in um, the whole world. So um, I'm. Let me just go straight to icana.org um, domain names, and then I I can over here. But uh, there's um, dot coms. There's dot um, edu's dot gov's dot dot orgs. Um, these are your top-level domains, and these are just some of the more popular ones. Uh, I wanted, I had a list somewhere. Probably flopped around too many times. I uh, show you know what? I'll just Google it again. Uh, <coughs> list of top-level domains. And I didn't even know. Here, here it is. At I can. I didn't even know some of these things existed. Here's a list. Well, okay. Here's the dot com domain. There's one dot college. And, I mean, a lot of these we don't. Um, use at this point, but they're set aside. And in some countries, they do like, um, let's see, isn't uh, Canada dot C A U C sometimes, or dot U K? You'll do if you're going to a site that's hosted out of the the U K. Um, but there, I mean, there's all these different. Uh, top-level domains, some that are pretty graphic and some that are just pretty innocent, like .edu and .gov, uh, .pizza, that's fun. Um, but they're all, 
set aside. So if you're going to become a .gov or a .edu, you have to register your .edu with this top-level domain. Now why we see most of them under .orgs or .coms um, or .edu's is because there are rules and regulations for who can be what. So if I'm a school, I can be a .edu. If I'm a business, I have to be a .com. If I'm a non-for-profit, um, a lot of times you'll see those as .orgs. Um, .net is just another, uh, like a lower level um, .com, but a, for an ISP. Military.mil. If you've been in the military, you've probably gone to some of those um, extensions. But those, that just means that any of the websites that have those um, extensions or the suffix, those are the um, everything is registered in that top-level domain. So, like my website is registered in the .com domain. In GRCC's website is registered in the .edu domain um, on the top level. And then it all trickles out to these different DNS servers around the, the world. Um, one of the cool things you can do with ICANN, ICANN.org, is look up who is. So if you want to find out who's registered to a prick a particular name, a domain name, you can do that. So over on page 59, it talks about DNS and how they're um, how they're reserved in the top DNS uh, root servers like the .com, .org, .edu's, uh, and and break down from there. On page 60 through 61. Uh, two and a couple pages after that, it talks about the steps for how these things are resolved. Um, so going back to here real quick, if I want to find out who owns, um, I'll just put in mine, katievandermeer.com. This is, I don't have my personal address um, do, uh, reserved here. But a lot of um, people do. If you know somebody, you could find out information this way uh, because every domain has to be registered. So here's my domain name that I have registered. I can look that up. And uh, here's my name. Uh, my organization should be registered as GRCC, but it's not. But since I use my katievandermeer.com that I registered and paid for, uh, but I use it only for work, I put my mailing addresses GRCC's address. Um, but you can see when I uh, created it, um, when I reserved katievandermeer.com, this happens to be 12-1-2013. Um, um, happens to be 17 days before I legally changed my name to Katie Vandermeer. So um, that's when I first got the, my website or reserved my domain name. And then it looks like it took me a little bit of time to, this is my anniversary, so that must have um, been when I first updated it, not on my wedding day, but <laughs> um, but when my registration ends and um, is then uh, renewed. Um, so much information you can find out here. This is all public knowledge. Um, who my host is, so you can see that uh, I run mine through a WordPress. Uh, a lot of places do as well. Um, just a ton of stuff that's out there for the public, and all of my stuff is protected, so there is just an idea of what you can look up. So let's say we want to look up grcc.edu. So who owns this? Oh, let's make sure I'm not a computer. I'm not a robot. Um, this is managed. EDUs are only um, those that are ma managed by EDUCAUSE. This is just for uh, colleges, universities, schools. And we can see that this is registered to Grand Rapids Community College. Here's the address. Here's our contact. This is our IT manager. I know him. And the uh, technical contacts. You can see their numbers. When was it registered? When does it expire? Um, Activated first in 2002. Uh, that was probably when I think we used to be um, 
I, I don't think we used to be .edu or it wasn't GRCC. When I first started, it was something different. Um, and I can't remember what that was. It was a long time ago. But that's when we first became grcc.edu. And then our different registration and updates. So take it, I'm sure you're now going to want to take a few minutes and check out whatever, you know, who owns TMZ or who owns uh, whatever domain that you typically use. Uh, but that's kind of fun. So that is ICANN.org and then who is, or just Google who is. Um, some other things on IANA, uh, let's just see real quick, I'll get myself organized here in a minute, I'll pause for a few minutes for myself, but um, page 60, and this shows you all of the steps of how DNS works. So again, I'm on my computer, this figure 27 is really great, so I'm on my computer and then I say I want to go to uh, katievandermeer.com. My local DNS server tries to resolve it first, and typically it can do that. So when, I, um, when I'm here and I say I want to go out here, this DNS can res resolve it and sends the site back to me. But if it can't, it goes to the root DNS and then to the top level domain and the authoritative DNS if it can't, you know, at the high, high level. So there's different levels of domains that it eventually goes to. Uh, Read through those steps carefully on page 60 and 61. Um, those are important to know how DNS works. And we're going to do, with our project, you're going to do a project to kind of um, look through that process. And you can also use um, one of the tools later on we'll look at. Um, hmm, I can't, I can't, it's not coming to me right now, but I sure hope this is still recording. <laughs> I hope you're still listening. Um, on 61, we are making good progress, uh, by the way, but this is, read about those. Um, if there's any questions or things that I might have skimmed over in the material, feel free to post it in the discussion board. Feel free to call me or email me, and I'll be happy to make another long video on it or just answer your question. Um, Page 62 and 63, look at how the namespace database is organized because on the homework assignment, it'll ask you what are the type of records you find, what do these records mean. So you need to read that on um, the bottom of 62 and 63 for the homework assignment. And that ends the DNS part. Um, I'm going to breathe for a second, so I'm going to pause. You won't notice a comeback, uh, but but uh, this is a good point to stop if you wanted to pause it as well because we're going to pick up on a new subject. So again, uh, if you are in class with me, these things just the lectures, that's what we're doing. This is really good stuff and things that you need to know, and I'm hoping it's helping you to read through the material. So hang in there with me. Thanks, and I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, the next section, we're on page 64, how, how ports and sockets work. Now, port numbers are uh, numbers that are assigned to kind of channels where data is transferred through. Um, so, let's see, port numbers like port 23 is Telnet and port 80 is HTTP. Now, you don't have to um, assign or, or remember all of these port numbers, but there are certain ones that um, are more popular that you'll want to know. And then as a network administrator, uh, you'll want to be able to kind of close some ports or open some ports, depending on the types of communication that you allow on your networks. Um, so on page 65, it talks about some well-known ports. And then uh, for the Network Plus exam, you should memorize all the well-known known port numbers that are listed on page 66. So uh, FTP is 21, SSH for Secure Shell is 22, the alternative to Secure Shell is Telnet. So if you don't want um, 
if you want people to connect to your network, but you don't want to let them do that uh, through Telnet, which is non, Telnet is not encrypted, then you would close port 23 and open up port 22, for example. Um, these port numbers are things that you can configure on your network to open or close to allow data to transfer either through TCP or UDP, which are our major transport protocols. And we'll get into that um, later, but memorize that chart because those things will come up when you take the certification. Uh, there's a list. There are port numbers range from 0 to 65,535. So if you think that these well-known ports is a long list to remember, just remember you're not memorizing 65,536 port numbers. Um, they're organized into three different types. You should know well-known ports, registered ports, and dynamic and private ports. So know the common ones. There is, a, here's a wiki. You can just Google list of TCP and UDP port numbers. Um, the well-known ports are listed here, and let's just make sure that this is uh, compatible with our textbook. So our textbook was just written. Oh, this is a lot longer than ours, so you don't have to memorize all those. Um, I would stick with the table on 66 um, and not the one that's listed in this wiki because the textbook is written specifically for the NetPlus. So these are what... Uh, this wiki considers well-known ports uh, and then register ports. So you don't, don't need to memorize a thousand or so ports that are here. But these are um, um, a, a good site to reference is this one here. So you can just Google that or look up that wiki. I think I pulled it up for... No, I didn't. I didn't pull it up for any specific reason other than they're all listed there. Um, I don't, re I don't, me I don't have them all memorized either. I have the major ones memorized, but uh, when you take the test, make sure you study those and what they're used for. So read through that section. Okay, new section. Bam! I'm going to close ports. Um, how IP addresses are formatted and assigned. Let's first look at IP4. Now, I'm not going to go through converting it to binary in this video because that takes a long time and uh, you'll need to know it and we'll cover it later on. But uh, for now, let's talk about what is addressed in this chapter. So to begin with, there's different um, IP4 is a 32-bit address scheme. Compare that to IB. IP6, that's 128 bit. IP4 is a lot shorter to read because it's only 32 bits. Um, when we talk, when we look at this, I, at, here we're looking at my IP address on my wireless connection uh, right here. This is my IP4 address, 10.0.0.11, and that's a masked, um, that's not a real IP because I, it's, uh, masked with the real IP of my provider or my router, but um, that's the IP, that's something we refer to. So something like uh, in the book 72.56.105.12, that's an IP4. Um, all of these numbers range from 0 to 255. Uh, nothing will be above that. So you'll never see like 498.342. Those aren't valid IPs um, for IP4. It's only an 8-bit address, and 8 bits is only 256 numbers that go from 0 to 255. Read about that because that's super important. We'll have much more um, time later on to talk about how that's all converted. On 68, it has a table that is class A, B, and C. Class A, you're assigned the first octet. So one of the cool things to look at, they don't, they don't give out um, class uh, A's anymore, but who uh, owns a class A IP or network? There's only 127 Class A's in the world, and uh, Class A addresses are going out of 
or, or IP version 6 addresses are going out of, um, they're not being used much, well they are still being used a lot, but we're transitioning to IP6 because we are um, running out of IP addresses. So we want to take a quick look at who owns class A's um, for IP version 4. And uh, here's a couple examples. The first octet, which would be like the first number of an IP address, that would be 0 to 126 or 127. Those would define um, class A networks. So here is, let's see, GE owns uh, three, the three network. So when you go to IANA or ICANN and you say, I need a um, class A IP, which they don't give out anymore, but if you did, GE did at some point, they said, okay, you're the 3.0.0.0 network, and then GE could take these last three octets or 24 bits and put them in any order they want. So when you look at this table on page 68, um, you have 16 million different possible combinations of those uh, octets. So that's why you have, uh, if you have a class A, you can have up to 16 million IP addresses on that uh, on that network. A class B is 65 million because, or, I'm sorry, 65,000 because they give you the first two octets. And then a class C, they give you the first three octets, and then you only have 254 IPs on that network. We'll talk about that extensively. You'll understand that um, for sure in a few more um, lectures and chapters out from here, but read through this information. I always think it's interesting, let me go back to here real quick, who owns class A's? Um, because these are companies from uh, way back when, when, when they were, when they had computers and nobody else did. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service um, owns class, well, they did own class um, A domain of, or not domain, but address space of 56. And Ford Motor Company um, had a 19, MIT had 18. So these were all big players back in the early days of networks. Um, the Department of Defense, you know, they had 11, um, 22, so they, there were the government agencies, the big players that were back in the day, those were Class A owners. Um, ARIN, A-R-I-N, this is the organization that manages um, DNS and DHCP in the uh, in our part of the world. So I think there's like seven, or I'm not sure how many um, different managers for like uh, a, a, there's one for Africa and one for Europe and one for Asia. Uh, it might be matched up with continents, but I'm not sure. That information's on iana.org. But um, the original list of IP4 address blocks. Oh, that's interesting, too. Fort Bragg. P packet radio was 009. So that had to be back. Does it say? Huh. I'm not sure, but I would, I would think that was back when uh, networks were mainly used for military and universities and government agencies, like Stanford. Hmm, very cool. Anyway, uh, take a look at that list. It's cool. Um, back to the textbook, 68. So class A, class B, class C. There is a class D and an E, and those are reserved um, classes. So they're not used for networking. Um, DHCP server, you can read through that applying concepts. Um, DHCP servers are uh, a service that's applied to um, like a Windows server or a Cisco network and um, you set up how your addresses are allocated. So what happens with um, static versus public addresses is, which is 
um, addressed on 69, 70, and 71 is that, did I say static versus public? I meant static versus dynamic, is with uh, DHCP, um, what happens is if this system here was a DHCP system, dynamic host control protocol, if that had the services ran on it, it has this pool or this table of addresses. So it's called a DHCP pool and it has all of the IPs in here that are available. So when I'm on this computer, I send out a broadcast message when I connect to the network and I say, give me a D an IP address and all of the DHCP um, servers go, let me see if there's something in my pool. Okay, there is. Let's check this off the list and send it back to this computer and then you lease it for a period of time. And um, DHCP is configured by the network administrator. Something we won't learn in this class, you'll learn that in your administration or your server admin courses. Um, network address translation, this is an important concept. Um, page 72, it starts really, um, and your, one of your homework assignments, this is a, um, one that we're going to do, and probably the last topic we'll talk about really for this video. So we're getting there, but um, we are going to do this project on page um, 93 that says create a NAT. Uh, translation table. That is um, addressed on page 73 on how to configure it. So I want to spend a minute to talk about that. Um, I'm just thinking maybe we should make a new video for that. So there's two separate things. I think we will. Um, no, yeah, I will. I'm going to make a short little video on that. Um, one. So you're still listening to me because I tricked you into listening to me the whole time. But page 73 on configuring network address translation, we're going to do that in another video and I'll have that clearly labeled because you'll need to do that for your assignment. So the rest of the things in this chapter, page 74, it talks about IP version 6. Now IP version 6 is a 128-bit um, address scene and it's used Here's the wiki on it. It's used because we're running out of four addresses. Um, I'm not going to go through this wiki, but but check it out. IP version 6, there's pages and pages about how the addresses are labeled and what it means. Um, very, 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 um, very complete. Now, in our book, we have a couple pages right now, but IP6 were developed to improve routing capacity capabilities and speed of communication, it's safer compared to IP4 network. IP4 we're running out of, so we need IP6. Um, IP6 is a 128-bit address and it's written as eight blocks or called quartets of hexadecimal numbers. You need to know how to um, read hexadecimal A hexadecimal. So like what does uh, what does F mean and D and A, B, C, D, E. So you will hexadecimal to decimal. We'll cover that later on. But hex is important to understand how to to read as well because uh, IP6 is written in hexadecimal numbers that are separated by colons. So it's a 128 bit stream. So if you look at page 74, that first bullet point, it's very long. Um, anywhere there's a series of zeros, you can replace that with double colons, and that's explained in um, this as well. So you, they can be shortened with different ways. Um, the link is sometimes, or the address is sometimes called the local link, and when we looked at our uh, system here, you know, you could see the local link address. There are not classes of IP6, so there's not like a class A, B, and C like there is with 4, but there are types of addresses, unicast, multicast, and any any cast, um, not class, cast. So read about those on 75. Uh, 
there are global addresses and then there are link local addresses too. So the global address can be routed through the internet and then the link local is the address for your internal network. We'll come back to this, but read through that because we'll be referencing IP version 6 and the auto configuration um, as well. And one of the other sites I pulled up was um, one here on the Cisco um, forum where it talks about, and I'll, I'll share this link in, the, um, in Blackboard, but it talks about how um, part of the MAC address or part of the IP version 6 address is obtained through the MAC address. So that, that is a good explanation of um, how of the, I, the EUI 64 format, which is also addressed in the book, um, the extended unique identifier to 64-bit, um, which is generated from the MAC address of that computer. Uh, tunneling is and 78, this is just a process for how you can take um, an IP4 network or, or an IP6 address on a IP4 network or vice versa. So it's um, basically packaging your IP4 data to go over IP6 or IP6 um, to package it as IP4 to go over that type of network. Um, ISOTAP is another protocol um, for tunneling. Uh, Toredo, Torito is another, a uh, Torito worm bores holes in the woods. Okay, that's something I didn't know. But it's an IP6 address intended to be used by this protocol always begins with 2001 and not the prefix, and the prefix written as slash 32. So it's the default in Windows 7, 8, and 10 as well. So read about um, tunneling. Page 79, troubleshooting tools. Ping, know how to use ping. You use it from here. So if I want to see if my server is up, I'm going to say ping uh, www.katievandermeer.com or I can ping my actual IP address, which is 192.0.78.24. If you get a response back, you get uh, your servers up. Um, there's different options for ping. Ping is the most common, most heavily used, most simple and easy troubleshooting tool for IPs. Um, ping 6 on IP6 networks. And uh, IP config, we looked at that. Um, IP config all or slash all, IP config slash release to set your IP free and then renew to get it back. Um, display DNS on page 83. We're going to do that with our uh, one of our questions, one of our assignments, um, and flush DNS as well. So know how to use IP config. NS lookup. Um, this will, if you look up, and uh, it, it works on some, but if you look up a, an IP or a domain name, uh, Katie bandermere.com, it will respond with the IP address of that um, domain name. So it's pretty cool. If you don't know what your, um, if you don't know what your server is called, the host name is, you can just um, look that up. So like, another one, I'll look up, uh, re, uh, I'm not sure if this one will work, but we have a Linux server at school called Raider Shell grcc.edu, but I don't know the IP address. Uh, right here, 74.116.152.55. So if I want to SSH into that, I could use the host name or I could use the IP address. So that's a pretty um, useful tool, uh, NS Lookup. Um, that's it. The, on page 87, the chapter summary is a very, very good. It uh, helps you tremendously. So read through that. And then um, I'm going to end there. There were some really cool sites, um, ipaddressguide.com. You can put in an IP address and convert it to um, was equal to, oh, that's IP to decimal conversion, but that doesn't make sense. Um, 
you can find out what ping does, you can find out what trace route does, and you can not only find out what they do, you can ping um, from this website. So if I want to ping uh, my computer, or I can ping um, my host, it does it within this window here. And it, it's the same results as what you would get here, but uh, through, through this website. If I want to use Traceroute, this traces the path from your current location to somewhere else, and it shows you what hops it goes through. So that's kind of cool as well. So IP address um, guide.com, check that out. And then uh, lastly, um, IPv6.org, IP, you, you have to spend some time on this website, IPv6.org, um, and read about why it's not out there yet and why it is becoming the new norm and why we have to learn about it. So thank you for listening. It is uh, my, I hope, uh, an hour. I'm going to stop. Thank you, thank you, thank you.